Welcome everybody. It is Talking Smashed episode three. The trilogy yeah. has arrived. I am Ryan. I'm Roger, and everybody knows that the third part is always the worst part. Uh, yeah, everyone. But we're, we're breaking that today. We're breaking the mold today. This episode will be great for you guys. Today we're doing Jack Daniels. I brought some Jack Daniels today. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually not the biggest fan of Jack Daniels, but it's here and I'll drink it. I got, we got to vary it a little bit. I didn't even ask. I yeah. just brought it. Yeah. I was like, all right, whatever. I'll just, <laughs> I didn't ask I'll what you this. liked. No, okay. you didn't. I just I, I brought like, it. You know, I like Canadian whiskeys for the most part. A little smoother. A yeah. little less kick to the nuts, you know? I like to kick people in the nuts. <laughs> That's what I do here. But oh, man. let's get this rolling. Let's go into the biggest topic yeah. right off the bat. Let's go. Daniel Bryan is back. Yep. Roman... Old big dog, someone yeah. shitting in your yard. Yeah, <laughs> and it's Daniel Bryan. Yeah, I don't know if you'll he'll be able to maintain the momentum they want him to have with Daniel Bryan there now too. Um, I know they will. I think they will try to remedy it by, you know, keeping them on different brands for the most part, at least for a little while. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I I still think that Roman is going to be Vince's thing, but now it just got a whole lot harder. Because people really, really attach themselves to Daniel Bryan. Uh, he's they a really merch care. selling machine. Yeah. And he's great. It, it, Daniel Bryan has that, that next level personality that he's just really hard not to love. Oh, God. Talk about the best face in the company now. Yeah. Is he the biggest face in the company they yep. got right now? You just watch him turn him heel at WrestleMania. Oh, man. What a stupid move that would be. But I could see him doing it. I could see him doing it, and he'll still stay on top, though. I don't yeah. know if it'll it's do... It's like that time they tried to turn the Undertaker heel with the demanding respect or whatever, and it didn't work at all. Right. I think it'll be kind of similar. People love him too much. Yeah. But, here's... Okay. Where does he go from here after this match? Okay. And does he win this match at WrestleMania, or do they use it to go to SummerSlam with something else? I certainly think that Daniel Bryan's return match, if it's they're going to be the one at WrestleMania... They're going to win that match. They're going to win unless there's some sort of weird swerve in there. They're so winning we, that match. Are we to assume then KO and Sammy are going to Raw because they are fired right now, you know? They yeah. have no job. KO yeah. has changed his Twitter to Kevin Steen. Yeah, it's just a black picture. Yeah, it's just, yeah. And so they have to stay with the company, obviously. So how do they stay? So you're saying, you're saying they win... And maybe KO and Sammy go to Raw. Yeah, something like that. Who, who's who's SmackDown get then? Um, I mean the the shakeup's coming up anyway. Is there any scenario where KO and Sammy win, and somehow Shane and Daniel end up going at it to set up a match between them, possibly, at yeah, like maybe. SummerSlam or something? It, it it very well could happen. But, you know, likely I would think that they're going to Raw. But I think I think Raw could send over, you know, send over Finn Balor in the club. Send them over. Well, there's also rumor that AJ's going to Raw. I know. So that ruins everything. If I mean, part of me wants AJ, Finn, and the club on the same brand. That's what I want. Yeah. So they can extend that storyline out. Because getting rid of AJ off of SmackDown, man, that is a major blow. That is a huge hit. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, Daniel Bryan's there, but I think at this point, everybody's going to want to see matches with Daniel and Shinsuke and Daniel and AJ. Yeah. I if I was them, I would not move AJ. I'd keep him there. Yeah. Because because it's a house that AJ Styles built. That's right. And you send him over to Raw, where Roman's going to be the top guy for a while. Mm-hmm. Granted, the he best, has beat Roman before. He has, but the, I mean, are we going to see that again? Or are we going to see him start going for the IC title over there? Maybe him and Seth, or or whoever wins, I guess. I'm a, I'm, right now, I'm betting on Seth. And just, and just to you know, clarify something for our listeners, we have a contest coming up. Mm-hmm. We have good friends over there at Smart to Death. If you don't listen to their podcast, you should. But our friends Kyle and Anthony, we got a little competition going. Okay. Coming up. We do. And it's going to be me and Roger's predictions versus theirs for WrestleMania. There's going to be some punishments. Yeah. For We're some s- reason, they think they're going to... They they think they can take the prediction king. I know. Roger fancies himself the prediction king. I'm pretty... 
I'm pretty fucking good, okay? You've been on a roll lately. <laughs> you have been on a I roll I try lately. to be wrong and I get them right. That's they're writing, true. They're riding around me, man. They're riding around me. Mm-hmm. They've tapped in to my home phone. They tapped into my cell phone. They're listening to me. And they're just like, we're going to go with what this guy wants. <laughs> yeah. This guy seems pretty good. WWE, they work in mysterious ways like that. <laughs> but we have a competition with them coming up. We're gonna shoot. It, we're gonna be doing a recording an episode with them. We're gonna do some predictions back and forth, and we need to come up with some good punishment for yeah. whoever wins. I don't know what theirs are. We've kind of toyed around with a few. Yeah, we haven't settled on any. But me and Roger are determined to win this. Yeah, we will not be losing this. I would. I would say that we we probably don't do anything too major. But uh, I, I just, you know, I'm pretty happy with bragging rights myself. But oh, a no. small, a small little punishment, fun. you know, something like, you know, for every day of the week, you got to send out a, a, a tweet saying how cool we are. Something nice about it. Something like that. Just a really, really good compliment about one of us. Just have that going all week. All week. Just how great yeah. we are. Yep. That could be that could be a punishment. We don't know yet. But. We're going to see. I'll, I'll go. We'll reply to everyone to like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. That's really nice. How did you do that? But we got Danny. Right. Who else do you, you want to see him with AJ? You want to see him? Yeah. With I also, Knox. more than anybody, I want to see him with the Miz. That's what everybody wants. I, yeah. But we know Miz is taking time off. Yeah, that's true. He's going to have a kid. So he'll be out for several months. So I think we will get they that take out for several months over a kid. God. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> who just, I mean, I guess Daniel Bryan went out for a little bit when he had his kid. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. There's so many matches for Daniel Bryan. I'm so excited. It makes it excited to watch SmackDown now that we finally got that payoff of Daniel Bryan's coming back. And he looked like he was on an adrenaline high when he was getting yep. that offense in. He looked like he was. Oh, and those pumped. drop kicks were amazing. Those dude. turnbuckle drop yeah. kicks. Yeah. He he like he exploded them into the turnbuckle with them. They were they were great, and you can tell that he just you know all the bumps that he ended up taking too. He loved all those bumps, man. He freaking loved it. Oh yeah, he was selling it so well too. He was out cold. Yeah, just like old times. You know they released uh, some um, about his medical stuff. Yeah, that he, has apparently- get, he has to get tested every time he. He's got to get tested after every time, but also that uh, apparently. The doctors, it's called like an impact test or something like that. Yeah, it's something like that. It's probably pretty. It's probably not something too intense. It's probably yeah. just it's got probably a flashlight close, closer this, to what they where, do probably with the NFL. Yeah, where are you con- right now? A concussion test. What's the date? It's probably not like he's got to go get a CAT scan every time. It's right. probably like make sure he's good. But the doctors apparently have reported that he shows no sign of any previous injury. So. That his brain does not, it, apparently it's functioning the way it should for 36. He got that you know. next level UFO treatment, dude. Yeah, he did. They beamed him up. They got him going. <laughs> you know what else was awesome about Raw this week was uh, Ultimate Deletion. Got to talk about it. Yep, we definitely do. Um, so we released a little news thing on it, kind of about how Vince didn't like it. But overall, you know, we didn't really get to talk about it and give our thoughts on what we, you know, how we felt about it. Yeah, and I thought I thought it was really good. I think I said this right at the beginning, right after I watched it, and I know a lot of people have said it since then. But it is not as good as ult, uh, sorry, Final Deletion, but it is still it's really good. It, Matt Hardy is there. The whole thing has a lot of heart. Uh, of course, it it still confuses people, the casual fans or whatever. And if anybody's listening, that is is sort of you know you don't know what's going on with the Ultimate Deletion. It's hokey. It's supposed to be hokey. Oh yeah. It's like it's like a, a B movie. Yeah. That's that's the whole purpose of it. It does feel good. To, it feel, they need to shake it up every now and then and like do something different. That's good. Yeah. But it's original too. It's something it did totally be, fresh. What I was happy with is it didn't feel different than the stuff they did in TNA. Right. Yeah. It wasn't as good as Final Deletion. It was Deletion, a little. It was a little like more this, polished. This. It felt like the same vein though. Yeah. It felt like they could they could have kept going. So and I hope they do keep going. Because, you know, like, so Bray finally responded. So, like, Bray responds on Twitter, and he sends out this tweet that says, Everything is gray. I feel you fading. I failed you. You failed me. Don't leave me not in this place. 
I can only assume that he's talking to Sister Abigail. Uh, I can only assume it's rambling like he yeah. does in every pro. Yeah, it is. It is <laughs> brave. But and then so Matt Hardy responded. He well, he quote tweeted it, or retweet or whatever, and he said, "Your vessel has been purged. It is empty. Your essence deleted. Primed for change. Embrace the light." So. We don't know what we're getting out of Bray. Did we get him Woken Wyatt, dude? Yeah, a Woken Wyatt, a Brother Bray, a Willow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what we're getting. So, but I don't know what we're getting with Jeff Hardy either. Yeah, like they, assume, they had him in there. He had the 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 contacts in that white out his eyes. Yeah, and he sang the got the whole world in his yeah, hands. It was just very small, but which it is was, what Bray used to sing. Remember, yeah. a while back, like yeah, it started with Senior uh, Benjamin, and he threw him the little globe, the little bouncy ball globe. <laughs> yeah, the little inflatable globe when he was under the boat. I loved it, dude. <laughs> I freaking loved that whole thing, and all the places they went to, and then the well, there was a moment where they're in the what is it, the land of obsolete men, right? Um, it and was they like do, a graveyard. The Scooby, yeah, they do the Scooby Doo thing, man. Yeah. Where they're running all over the place or whatever. You see them yeah, going one entry and there's like the w- double and triple exposures or whatever where there's multiple people on screen. I freaking loved it, man. Oh, yeah. I was all for it. And then we got them in the, the dome of deletion. That's right. Where, where we had we had to make the hardest decision that I've seen in, in wrestling in the past few years. <laughs> Mower of lawns or chair of wheels. <laughs> he went with the mower of lawns. Yeah, he went with the mower of lawns. <laughs> he was going to run Bray Wyatt over with a lawnmower. With a riding lawnmower, yeah. yeah. <laughs> In the slowest uh, head-on collision yeah, he ever. Was, he was basically like the face he was making, his uh, arms out all the way. And it looked like he was jizzing in that little riding lawnmower. <laughs> jizzing. <laughs> it was so great. <laughs> Sorry, that's the booze talking. Yeah. I say jizz, man. It's fine. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but overall i i thought it was really good do you, do you think it was pretty good i oh i enjoyed it i really can't wait for another one i hope yeah. they do another one i hope they and don't hope, do it too often but not but, wait too long at yeah. the same time I, yeah i don't want to wait also don't want you know vince or michael cole or whoever it is whoever was orchestrated michael cole going in front of everybody and saying i apologize for what you're about to watch yeah. Never, ever, ever, ever start a product that you're putting on your TV off with, I'm sorry for what you're about to watch. I know. Like, that is that is garbage. And so many people loved it. They yeah. didn't love that. They loved Ultimate Deletion. No, so. they gave him shit for it. Yeah. They well did. earned shit. And it might have been Vince piping in his ear. So Vince might need that shit, too. Yeah. I, I, would, I love giving Vince shit. Yeah. Of course, he takes credit for anything great and blames something else for everything that sucks, but... Course. Um, well, okay, well, on Raw, did you like the Roman Reigns, Brock, how it started off? Um, Roman Reigns coming out uh, from the crowd or whatever. Kurt's trying to get him to leave. Uh, he says no. Kurt's like, I'm not dealing with this. You're Brings still... us some U.S. Marshals. Yeah, it couldn't just be security. You know it had what? to be U.S. I, Marshals. I liked the fact that the U.S. Marshals actually looked... They, I think they, they were looked, wrestlers. Yeah, but they looked like they could be U.S. Marshals. Uh, I don't know. They they varied. You they know, look country enough for me. I, I'm used to seeing U.S. Marshals with the cowboy hat. Yeah. Well, typically the the like security and stuff they get are all these buff dudes. You can clearly tell that they're wrestlers. These guys don't clearly look like they're wrestlers or anything like that. You know, appar- they, they look kind of like cops. You know, apparently I read that Roman Reigns accidentally like hurt one of them pretty bad. Oops. That like he elbowed him and might have like like fractured his jaw or something. To one of those security guards. I don't know. Whoops. I didn't look too into it, but it was supposedly like he actually yeah. hit him. But they cuff him. And A, okay, so here's here's where WWE kind of kind of pisses me off with this. This is one of those things they do. And like, come on. Even kids know this isn't how you do it. They cuff his, hand, the, his hands in front of him. You don't do that crap. <laughs> Nobody has ever cuffed somebody's freaking hands in front of them that was, you know, a potential threat. Yeah. Those hands go to the back. They did, you know, this Stone Cold. He had his hands cuffed in front a few times too. Did he? A few. He had a few behind his. I remember back the, as the well. major ones, the big ones. He had them behind his behind back his and then back pushing him out when they escorted while him out. Why he's talking trash? But um, well, but yeah, this. So this clearly sets up. You're like, you know, all right. So something is happening here, 
And just as as they try to get him out of there and he starts fighting back with them, Brock's music hits. And Roman Reigns does sell the fact that he's got the handcuffs on. Yeah. And he's like, oh, shit. But yeah. the beatdown, in my opinion, was not great. Because it was it was just lackluster. There wasn't a whole lot to happen. We got some German suplexes. Could have been a lot more brutal. What about the chair? Yeah, the chair was fine. Several several shots. What it, it would have really took it home for me if if he would have uh, f'd him in the the medical bed, like <laughs> pulled him out of the bed. Just they they have him on the little gurney thing mm-hmm. or whatever. You know how it slides off of the bed. Yeah. If you put that up and then f five that. Oh Jesus Christ! That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, but there's like, is there any way for him to put his hands down to like take that bump? If he's strapped in a bed, he's a big boy. <laughs> can take it just oh, have God. the have the thing land on its back yeah you know don't don't <laughs> don't don't corkscrew it brock i'm trying just, to picture just, how hilarious that would look he was already being kind of kind of gingerly with him too because you know clearly well, it just kind of like came the, the thing that I, part, I thought was funny was once they got him in the gurney and they were wheeling him up it's like Brock runs all the way down there and just kind of shoves it over. Yeah, just kind of pushes <laughs> like, it oh, over. Oh, that's like, all you got? Freaking Strowman took it and wheeled it off a freaking ledge yeah. thing. <laughs> you remember uh, that? Oh, yeah, my gosh. Yeah, that was great. And uh, I guess they're they're making Brock look scared in this promo. You think so? I think so. Like, so the way they're playing it out right now is Brock's not showing up. Roman's out there getting promos on him with no response because he's not there. And then the time he does show up, he waits for Roman Reigns to get handcuffed before he attacks him to where Roman can't attack him back. Right. I think it makes, I think it makes Brock look a little scared of him going into mania. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I can can see that too. Maybe he is. Maybe, maybe they play a storyline. I doubt it, but yeah. Well, you know where he, they had their match at WrestleMania. What was it? Was it 30? Or 31. No, it wasn't 30. It was 30. <clears throat> it was 31. 31? I think. They had Ooh. their match or whatever. And, um, or is it 32? It's not 32, I don't think. The one that Seth, anyway, whichever one Seth ended up yeah, freaking I think doing. It, it. I think it, it, it's 31. And they're, but, um, and they're built for that one suck too. Yeah, but if, if Brock or Heyman maybe cuts from or whatever, that at that match, Brock knew that. Reigns had his number, then I could see the the whole scared thing coming in. But otherwise, I guess I don't really. I just thought it was kind of a crappy beatdown. Yeah. Well, you know his uh, his boy Heyman. It got announced today, I think, that he's he'll be doing Goldberg's yep. inducting. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. You like that? Yep. I also still think that. Um, I'm not gonna say this you on still, air. You still? Think, I'm not gonna say this on air. You still think Andre the Giant Battle Royale is going to Goldberg? Yes, I do. Dude, we got to talk about this when we predict because okay, I don't if, think that's a good if, prediction. If Smart to Death predicts this shit right under me, dude, I'm gonna be so pissed. You can predict the same thing; and it'll just be a wash. But I that's a bold, that's a bold prediction. That is bold. If I don't go with that, dude. Off, I don't want to start with a an, like a zero oh and one on the first thing. Yeah, but I mean, who else is gonna win it? Rusev. Goldberg, dude. I tell you, man. <laughs> Goldberg, Goldberg's winning it. I I got the gift Matt on Hardy, my side. I don't know. Dude. Matt Hardy got... doesn't have anything now at WrestleMania, as far as right now. Maybe he wins it. Yeah, I got the gift of the gift of prediction on my side, dude. Gosh, to me, ruin... they're like they're like this is such a great idea. Don't ruin this for us. God knows what they're coming up with <laughs> for us <laughs> to do. <laughs> but yeah, so we got Paul Heyman. He's inducting Goldberg into the Hall of Fame. Which is, eh, it's something. It's the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Do you, you like this? You like that Mark Henry's in as well? Yes, I do. Mark Henry's done a lot. Yeah. He's helped a lot of people along the way, too. There's so many people that tweet out at Mark Henry thanking him for getting them where they are. So, you got yeah. some good, you got I, some deserving I, I, people. I like Mark Henry, man. I've yeah. always liked Mark Henry. Yeah. Um, I'm not big on the celebrity end of the inductees. <laughs> yeah, me either. But Mark Henry definitely should be there. Mark Henry deserves it. He's the father of a hand, man. That's right. <laughs> sexual chocolate. I know. And he pulled it off. He did. He pulled off the chocolate, the sexual chocolate. <laughs> we got mania. You know, one of the biggest matches that you're excited about is 
is the 205 Live, the oh, championship yes, match. I am. So this week we learned that Ali bumped up. He's he's in the finals with uh, Cedric, Cedric Alexander. Mm-hmm. And what? I called that straight from the straight from the very beginning. I is was he, like, it's Ali. Are dude. you riding it all the way? I'm riding it all the way, dude. We're going Ali all the way. Ali all the way. WWE clearly has to see by now that he is money over Cedric Alexander. Both of the guys are great. Um, they put so much into Cedric Alexander. They, they do. But I almost think him losing is a better storyline, too. I mean, yeah, it could be. It could be a better storyline for Ali. Because that belt, he was he was obviously, that was his belt to get. And, and with all the Enzo stuff, everything, just crap kept falling apart in front of him. Right. And if they just slip it away from him one more time, that is gonna that's gonna be good, dude. That's a good story there. Granted, you know, Ali is what if he loses, you know, he's still gonna have plenty of things to do. Yeah. But I think I think Ali is better on the mic. He's good. I think people are further behind Ali than they are Cedric. Yeah. Um his matches I Okay, I know this is this is kind of a, a opinion, but I think Mustafa Ali's matches are better than Cedric Alexander's. Really? Yes, every single one of Mustafa Ali Mustafa Ali's worst match in the Cruiserweight Classic was better than Cedric Alexander's best match, really? which was the probably re- with Roderick Strong. Yeah. Oh, I loved that match though. It was a great match, that but was a good match. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I I am. Completely, totally in on Ali, man. He's he's very good. Yeah, I mean, you have called it from the beginning, and that it does seem like that's there. And I don't really think anybody him. else, at least of our friends and stuff, thought that Ali was going to go that far. Uh, not from the beginning, no. No, not from the beginning. Just because he was always one of those that looked really great and did really great. He didn't get any promo time. Nope. And but it didn't seem he just seemed like another great performer to yeah. them. So, yeah. Was... And Ali, he had that promo, too, about, you know, I'm here to show, you know, it's more less about the color of your skin and more about your heart. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. That just makes me feel even more like, okay, they're going to go with Ali. Yeah. Do you like that they're doing face versus face for this? Yes, I do. You think one of them... I don't think either one of them have neither, to play heel. Neither of them They just heel. have to play it. They, they have to play it high-flying, man. This has to be... A good damn match. Where's where it they, go? I think it should be not the pre-show. It certainly should not be on the pre-show. Okay. It should be the very first match on the card. The very first match on yep. the card? That match will <laughs> hype people up. So last year it was Give the, it 20, 20 minutes or so. So the last... Last year, what was it? It was the last match on the pre-show. Yeah. And then I think it opened with AJ versus Shane. Is that right? I think it did. Yeah, that sounds right. I feel like Shane and AJ opened it up last year. But I could be wrong. God, that was... Wait, what about the Battle Royal? That's on the pre-show, I oh, think. Oh, is it on the pre-show? I think so. Ah, oh, shit. It's we hard sh- to remember. We should do research before we do this. <laughs> nah, man. Who does research? Um, it doesn't matter. But I think it, I think it should be the first match on the card. I think if you're building a brand, yeah, you gotta stick it on the main card. But yeah. I... As usual with WWE, I don't have a lot of faith. Where do you where do you want it to go? Where would you like it to be placed? I think the first match on the on the main card is a good spot for it. I think. Yeah, I think it's the perfect spot. Do the give it twenty minutes. Let them hype up that crowd because they can put on a freaking show stealer of a match. And that way, you have to you have so much separation between that match by the last match. Uh, it won't it won't take away from any of the other matches. Really. Yeah. Well, you know, here's a match that I, you know, the the mixed tag match, but with Ronda Rousey, mm-hmm. I feel like they're gonna stick it way later in the card than it needs to be. Yeah, I think that is like a middle of the pay per view yeah. type of. That's kind of where I feel. I feel like it's going to I go. Feel like but... it's gonna be like one of the last four matches or something. You're gonna but you, see you're that. You're probably right, dude, because because they want to promote Kurt this Angle, so bad. Triple H, and Ronda Rousey are all there. But it's gonna be a match that you're like, eh, they should have stuck that near the middle somewhere. Yeah. I just, I, but yeah, I mean, I assume it's going to go as one of the last four matches, five matches. There's probably like 15 on the damn card. Mm-hmm. 
which that's something we need to look up really soon. But I mean, we got two more shows a piece on Raw and SmackDown before we got the go home. Well, yeah. the go home show will be in two weeks. Yeah, we're well on the road to WrestleMania which, right now. Which is another reason why SmackDown I'm so excited about is because they got a lot of work to do. Yeah, they do. Towards. So they, maybe they it's going to be good. They waited so long in a lot of those feuds to freaking pull the trigger on them. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. I do think they probably knew Dan O'Brien was going to be cleared yeah. way before that even, they actually cleared him. Maybe even, they didn't tell him. Even Shinsuke and AJ, man, like they're not doing much with that at all. No. Get, you're getting a few little like, little backstage back and forth. <laughs> I love the uh you should have more faith in yourself. <laughs> yeah. More confidence. Let me guess, you're gonna beat me a wrestler. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say though? Kick to the face. Knee or to something? the face. Knee to the face. Oh jeez. But yes, knee to the face. <laughs> <laughs> it's very good, man. Shinsuke's getting he's he's getting more and more comfortable. He's getting he's getting a lot better at that stuff. Okay. Do you think as usual the takeover usually is better than the pay-per-view? Yeah. Do you think this takeover is better than the Mania card? Okay, I will give I will give the Mania card some serious credit cuz it is a good card this year so and far. And it's so huge. How could takeover be better than that? Yeah. But I still think Takeover is. Gonna, I know it's so good. Yeah, they get like five matches and they make the let's most. Let's be real though that them. that Takeover card is pretty stacked too. Every There's, time, yeah, like, every time it is. Oh my god! I feel every like time. this Takeover is almost full of main event like Takeover level matches. Uh, it's man, it's it so is. good, dude. There's so much good stuff on this card. I cannot wait. Yeah, I'm hoping we get Anita Smith versus Champa. I don't know if it's happening. I don't oh, know if yeah. she can go in the ring, <laughs> but she oh, was, man. she's my hero standing how, up to how, bullies like that. How great was that though? You know, he did not see that come. How good on Champa to keep such a straight face with the grandma in your face. Yes. Booing you. He was getting booed <laughs> by a grandma and he kept a straight face the whole time. I would have never been able to do that. And then he went on Twitter. He said, I'm not scared of any grandma open challenge to any grandma. <laughs> <laughs> And then she responded. She yeah. responded and said, I'll be at the next Full Sail show. This is a really cool grandmother we got here. We yeah. got some next level grandma. She's okay. getting front row seats to NXT. She's she's getting in wrestlers' face. My my grandmother, I will give her I'll give her props for being pretty cool. Is she feisty like that? She is a little feisty. Uh she spent a lot of time in New York. She's an artist. But she, man, she ain't ever went to any takeover and challenged Chompa or got in his face. My grandmother ain't ever done that. That's how this much is, they this love is, Gargano. This is next level granny, dude. I feel like Gargano was backstage laughing his ass off. I oh, feel like everybody well, he was, backstage. He was in the, uh, Gargano was oh, in the yeah, crowd. That's right. he, yeah, he was in the crowd waiting for him to get to him so then he can attack him. But I imagine everyone backstage was probably like, oh my God, yeah. <laughs> what is going I just, on here? How did he keep a, a, just a, that he was in character. scowl on his face, dude? Uh, it was so good. I love it so much. I love it so much. And then his match with Gargano is going to be great. Oh, my God. Oh, it's going to be so good. I can't wait. Me either, dude. And then... What do, you, do, you think, do you think the do you think the belt closes that show? Almas and... Um, Aleister Black. Yep, or Gargano and Ciampa. I feel like Gargano and Ciampa should, because that's the longest storyline. Mm-hmm. I feel like it should. I agree. I think that match should be last. It's so huge. It will certainly be second to last if it's not last. I mean, Gargano but... is the biggest face NXT has had so far. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think before that, it was Finn Balor, I think. Would yeah. you say? Finn Balor is pretty safe, I would say. And then, but Gargano, he's he spent a lot of time there. And they have built. They, this has been a yeah. feud that has been People building love him, man. for a while. People love him. Yeah, they just told his story really well. Yeah, I after agree. after so they they told the story of him and DIY never getting you know, never getting the big one. They're constantly falling short. You know, they're losing. They're losing. The, his best friend turns on him. Like this is such a slow burn. Like yeah. And then after that, he keeps losing. He can't get his freaking mojo back. I guess. And he keeps losing. And then when he finally almost wins the belt, you know, he loses again. And then Ciampa comes out and, you know, you know. Ices him for his, his yeah, job. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, they've just told this story so well. Like, this is the best story probably. I don't Is it the best story on WWE? Main and? Mm. 
Um, yeah, I would say probably. I mean, how invested are you to any other story? I don't know. It's up there, right? Yeah. It's got to be like there. one of the best stories they're telling right now. Mm-hmm. And that's why everyone can't wait. So I think it does need to finish up and be the main event. Yeah. At TakeOver. I think so, dude. I have no idea where it goes from here. I'm anxious to see. Does yeah. it just end with this match and then Gargano uh, goes up and Ciampa just stays there? Or do they both go up? Or do they both stay? I can't wait to find out. I don't yeah. know the answer to that. So yeah, yeah, I can't wait to find out either. But it's gonna be good. Yeah, and d- have you been like in? Okay, what do you think of this the CN Alistair feud? Do you uh, think the build's been okay? Yeah, I think it's been a pretty decent build. I, I wish like there the was a little bit so more far. of them. Yeah, like, them together. But I think I think keeping them separated a little bit is kind of helpful too. Yeah, because we got a the really good thing with Alistair and Zelina Vega mm-hmm. uh, two weeks ago, and then well, sorry, a week ago, and then this week we got. Um, uh, uh, sorry, Almas coming out and cutting a really, really good fiery promo. Mm. Granted, a lot of it was in Spanish, and there was some English in there. That was very broken Spanish. Yes, English. I like. And then I he wish... said it, he said a cuss word, dude. He did. He He's... he really let it go too, man. He said shit. Yeah, he fired it out there, and it was it was awesome, man. That was a good promo. Yeah, I mean, I like him. I I mean, yeah, I... me too. He's got a great. Dude, he's such a great wrestler. He looks awesome. Yeah. The only, my only worry for him, my only, only worry is that they're going to push him up to main roster and they're going to cut Zelina Vega with him. And I think she is absolutely necessary. She's got to go with him. Yep. She's good. The moment that she's gone, it's going to be a lot harder for him. It is. Yep. I think they got to move her up with him. She's too good. Yeah. Move her up with oh, him. Oh, and she is really good, man. She's yeah. so persistent. And that little, that tiny little body of hers letting out that sweet hurricanrana, man. Yeah, she's that done, thing is awesome. I think she does it at like every time he has a match, somebody's getting that. Yeah, <laughs> into the steps. She's such a good cheater, man. Yeah, no, they. I mean, they play it so damn well. Yeah, I really. It, it even like the way they do those guys, and they 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 book uh, Almas and and Vega. It almost makes me feel like there is a possibility that Aleister Black could lose. Yeah, I know. It does. It yep. does feel like that. I don't think he will. I don't think so either. I'm still going to predict Aleister Black taking that belt. Yep. But can we talk about probably the most underappreciated match, though? I didn't hear a lot of response on that tag match. Yeah, okay. So we and had, we loved it. We had Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan versus the the Roderick Strong and... Um, Pete Dunn. Pete Dunn. So, who was it? Mustache Mountain... Tyler, got, Bate, uh, yeah. Tyler Bate got hurt. He wasn't able to compete in the the Dusty Rhodes Classic. Yeah. So Roddy sent out a thing to William Regal saying, "Hey, let me find a partner." Yeah, let me find a partner. Um, and William Regal said, "Okay, so you're waiting, waiting, waiting." And this episode comes up. His partner comes out. It's Pete Dunn. And Oni Lorkin though, Oni Lorkin and. Danny Birch, these old haggard looking fuckers. I don't know I don't know how old Oni Lorkin is. Danny Birch looks like he's he's got a few city miles on him, dude. Yeah, he looks like he's late thirties. Um, he's grizzly. He looks man. like well he kinda looks like he's probably around Bobby Roode's age, man. Yeah, he looks like he's gonna you know, knock the shit out of somebody though. And boy were they knocking the crap out of him. They don't have TV. a match that isn't super stiff, yeah. the two of them. Well this match not only was it super stiff, it was super fast. Oh yeah. It was lightning fast, and both teams, man, they were dishing it out. And Pete Dunn, dude, that guy has such a freaking bright future in front of him. How many, how many of those slaps were you like, oh, yeah. God. Oh, yeah. Those things are intense. But Pete Dunn, dude, he, dude, he is something, he's something special. Yeah, he's young. What is he, like 23? Yeah, he's not something? very old, he, but he's like the, the, he's, he's got so a lot of experience. too, yeah. like. Just the, the faces and the shrugs and all that stuff. I know it's part of his character, but he does it so well and he looks so unique. Yeah. And he's you know, he's just such an original character and his the work, man, he's fucking awesome. Yeah. And but that tag match, dude, good lord. I could not believe that <laughs> nobody else everybody just kinda I I watch a few podcasts and stuff and reviews or whatever and they just brushed over and I was like, How do you brush and over that yeah, match? That match was great. That match was amazing. That match was great. And then you know what I mean, 
I didn't watch as many as you did. What'd they say about Cassius Stone and Adam Cole? Because that was a great match, too. Yeah. Uh, that that match was the one that got most of the praise. I mean, but it, it was, deserves no, that was, it was good. absolutely a good match. And, like, Cassius Ono, dude, they, they did for a while, like, where, you know, he was credible because they gave him wins and stuff. And I almost wish that he would have beat Adam Cole here. I felt yeah. like he really could have used that win. Uh, but uh, overall, I mean, he looked good in the match. Adam Cole is the freaking ultimate shark, dude. He's <laughs> so good. He's yeah. so good. And then he, oh God, what is that move called where he picks him up and slams him? Um, which one? It's the setup for his shining wizard. Oh shoot! Is I it the, is it the is it the neckbreaker one that he does? Kinda. I can't remember the name of it. It has a name. It has its own special name, but. Uh, just the fact that he could lift, uh, oh, Cash Cash Ono, Ono, dude. I think he did that move twice. Yeah, he he did. And it was, dude, I can like, this guy is no joke, man. He's a big dude. Oh yeah. He's a, he's a powerhouse and monster of a dude. He's, well, he he definitely helped him get him up there. Yeah. But But still, it's still like, it looks He still was holding him up, dude. And that's, that's pretty, pretty powerful. Uh, Adam Cole's starting to bulk up a little bit too. He's yeah, it's those it's that trainers. Those yeah. trainers at the performance center are getting them getting them pumped. Yeah. You know, I see all these training videos with Ronda Rousey and she looks way better than her uh, dark segment mm-hmm. <laughs> with Dana Brooke. I you see, wanna talk about that for a second? Uh because, is there much to say? Uh, dude, she was like it's like there was like Jedi level powers there or something. <laughs> stupid <laughs> crap like that like she had a force field on her arm mm-hmm. throwing it up blocking that slap yeah i wish you i would have rather her take it i would have rather her take it yeah than block it like that like like it was two swords clinging together it was really slow too like the punch didn't look like it was real like it looked like it was like a slow motion like okay you're gonna block this like you could tell they didn't rehearse much like yeah. you could tell she said you're gonna go out there and then i'm gonna come out there and you know, maybe I'll attack you, maybe whatever. Yeah. And they kind of winged it and it did not go that well. No, it did not. It and looked very bad. I like ha- the slam. The slam looks sloppy, but and you it, know, I kinda like sloppy slams. It has sloppy it slamming, has, dude. It has me a little worried for WrestleMania. You ever done any of that sloppy slamming before? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know exactly what you're referring to by sloppy slamming, you said. Uh <laughs> you know, so like you know, WWE is just, they collect that indie talent. That indie talent builds themselves up on the ROH or the PWG or even in New Japan. And, you know, I don't want to say those are necessarily indie or whatever, but then they come over and, you know, now New Japan has Mark Cuban helping them out. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's helped him a lot, you know, especially with like promo sales. You know, there's a New York Times article that said that, the owner of pro wrestling tees.com who has the, who does all the new Japan like stuff, the contract with hot topic Mm -hmm. that apparently since June, they did the deal in June. They've sold 470,000 units, which seems pretty good. Yeah. That's a lot of shirts. A lot of bullet club shirts is what that is. I mean, uh, WWE reported last year, $801 million in revenue. That's what the article said too. So you could still see a significant difference in size, of this type of stuff. Yeah, but, but WWE also has a lot more than just shirts too. Oh, they got a ton They have of stuff. they have those belts that go for like 300 400 a pop. Like you don't want one though. Yeah. I do want one. <laughs> I want them all. I want all of them if I can afford it. But you know, so so Cody Rhodes in the article makes a statement and I want to I want to know what you think about it. Okay. So he says WWE does the entertainment part of sports entertainment so so well. And New Japan does the sports part of sports entertainment like nobody else. Who said this? Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes? This is a comment from him, who's obviously been in both. Yeah. He's seen both sides. I agree. I think there's a lot of... But there is a little bit that I kind of disagree with, too. Okay. Um, So, yeah, New Japan does the sports stuff really well. I agree with that really well. Or, or completely, but they also have this thing kind of like, you know, being the elite and all that stuff where they have the entertainment side. They let those guys run with it. Mm-hmm. WWE doesn't do that. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, maybe you could you the could make it. You're getting is Matt yeah, Hardy. You could, you could argue Matt Hardy, but for the most part, they don't do that. They don't no. let the dudes do their own promos and stuff. No, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of oversight. They kind of trust them a little bit more. Yeah, there. and I think that as an entertainment value is is more meaningful than people might put on it. Yeah. Um. I, okay. So like, I'm not. Super... But I'm not going to say that they they do it better. I'm just saying, you know, like don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't highlight that they do it so much better. Maybe WWE WWE has a little higher production value and stuff oh, like that. They have more true. writers. Yeah. Um, but so 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 much better. I would not say. I would say it's it's a different cup of tea. Well, I'm wondering. What I'm wondering is this: like now that Mark Cuban's involved, he hadn't been involved that long, but he is now. I'm wondering if he's going to start pushing them a little bit to- more towards storylines, which is something ROH needs to do. And mm-hmm. cause like they have storylines, but they're very, eh, they're yeah. not like well, in depth and that's what kind of separates WWE is the storylines. Yeah. So, and people love it. I mean, we comment on it all the time. People talk about it all the time. So people want the storylines along with the great freaking matches. Yeah. Cause they, I they love don't watching need, great matches. They don't need, you know, too much of a story, storylines over there. They, need, they don't need to overdo it. WWE overdoes it. Sometimes. They overkill it too often. So, well, here's the thing: is they either overkill it or they under. Yeah, or yeah, they don't do anything at all. They don't. They don't. There's like no good healthy medium at WWE. Uh uh-uh. uh And I miss the times when like five different wrestlers, all storylines were interchanging. Yeah, you need to intertwine all that stuff, and yeah, they do not do that often. They enough. used to have it to where like four or five different wrestlers, like their storylines are crossing paths, so then they can build matches off of that. And I feel mm-hmm. like they don't do that as much Mm-mm. anymore, they like don't. they should. But but and then on the other the other side of the coin too as far as WWE not doing this the sports side as well I I don't entirely agree with that either because yeah. you got dudes like you know AJ Styles and Shinsuke that are about to put on a freaking clinic and mania um I hope so and I I know so dude it's going to happen we you have that cruiserweight stuff going on that tournament not a bad match on that damn thing. Well, really, I'm just hoping that AJ's injury isn't so nagging that yeah. he can put on a really great, like, and doesn't have to, like, sure tone it down for the sake of, well, if I get really mm-hmm. injured, then I'm out for a while, so yeah. I got to be a little safer. That's what I'm hoping doesn't yeah. happen. I hope that it's I hope just that some sort either, of, but... like, sprain that needs a little <laughs> bit of time off of it. Give him some a break from the house shows until he has AJ doesn't match. even be working house shows. Yeah, I'm a little shocked he is too. And you know, part of Daniel Bryan's contract is most likely going to be similar yeah. to what they're saying. Now, is- granted, if 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 they we have that house show come up here, and I said that I won't go to it if it's not SmackDown because I want to see AJ Styles. You want to see Daniel Bryan too? Yeah, I want to see Daniel Bryan, but I I've seen Daniel Bryan before. But he doesn't. He's not doing house shows. So yeah, they said his contract will be very similar to Randy Orton's, where he's just doing the TV. And the pay per views. That's so smart, dude. That's smart. It keeps your biggest star safer to not have him do house shows, but at the mm-hmm. same time, it makes your house shows really worthless to freaking go to if none of your stars not are. Not really. Just it's like, you know, just keep your, your older stars out. Well like, maybe Ron is still gonna be are, there. I would say I would say keep the ones in very prominent storylines or ones holding belts, not doing a bunch of house shows. Like do some but not a ton. Just or you know, like have it set up to where, you know, the hometown boys, the statewide boys or whatever are at those house shows. Yeah. I mean yeah, I don't want every house show to be like, Oh, you wanna go see Heath Slater and Kurt Hawkins go at it? No. No. Uh, but I don't think they're gonna you know, like obviously you still got Braun. You still got all the dudes in the shield. Uh, SmackDown, granted, the way the card is now, you Sammy and Kevin, but Bobby Roode, the modern day Maharaja, <laughs> <laughs> back knee, yeah, you but. got all that. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I assume I assume his schedule's super limited till Mania though, mm-hmm. because of that. Injury. Oh yeah, and I just hope that that doesn't hold him back from putting on like a stellar match like I they did they at will. Wrestle Kingdom. I have a lot of faith in him. They're two very seasoned yeah, AJ people. AJ will figure it out one way or another. He'll probably hurt himself over it if he has to, but he'll figure it out. Oh yeah, absolutely. I don't want him to do that, but I feel like he seems like he seems like the kind of guy that he'll push it a little harder than he needs to 
if he thinks the match yeah, is going Yeah, I just down. don't want him to get more injured, and then he's out for like very nine true. months. That's also what yeah, I worry. There, I'd rather his, take a very mediocre right into Raw. I know. I'd I'd take a very mediocre match and a healthy AJ Styles that's over true. the greatest match ever. And now we're without him for ten months yeah, or something. That's true. So. I think but, that's, that's, yeah, the whole point was just, you know, I think WB can do the sports stuff pretty well. Oh, yeah, they absolutely can. I know Meltz is a big New Japan mark, and he yeah. really he really hates on WWE a lot. Yeah, yet, but, you know. his opinion is so strong. Yeah, he's, mm. <laughs> I like Meltz. I, I, Sometimes I do. A, I disagree good, with him a lot. He's a good critic, but, yeah, he, he does does have some of that bias, whether he wants to admit it or not. Oh, he's, oh, yeah. He he has to admit it. He doesn't There's, admit it though. Ah, uh, he, he should. Doesn't. Come on, you can't give Okada every match as a six star match or some crap. He does everything perfect, and not be critical. I mean, his biggest criticism of him was well, he needs to have you know not as long matches sometimes. Yeah, and that's he his says biggest, the matches are predictable, and that's the biggest criticism. Yeah, yeah, he says they're predictable at six stars, five yeah. stars, five and a half stars, five point four stars. Yeah. He's not as high. He, he he loves those New Japan matches. Yeah, and they are good. It's just they funny. are good. They it's just funny are. watching him pretend like no, I totally am not no. biased at all towards oh. these guys. But yeah, man, guys, thank you for coming in, listening with us today. That's all we got right now. Please yep. follow us on Twitter, Instagram. Yeah, Ryan's doing our tweeters YouTube. now. YouTube, man, you can tweet I'm, gonna, with I'm Ryan. starting to live. I'm gonna live tweet stuff now. He's trying, man. Apparently, that's the way to go. I don't know. We're still learning. Live this. tweeting. We baby. still train wreck our ending. You to live shows. tweeting, baby. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Uh, if you guys are listening to this on YouTube, be sure to comment and subscribe uh, to the page, the Rapid Kick Media page. Uh, you can find the Wrestle Forever stuff on SoundCloud and iTunes for sure. Soon, I will have us on more places. That is a promise. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you you guys so much. Stay away from the sloppy slamming. Do it.